In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to build out your own answer engine, which is similar to the Perplexity style answer engine with Grok, Mixtral, and Langchain. If you're not familiar with Perplexity, the way that it works is if you send a query through their interface here, what you'll get is first you'll get sources back, then you'll get an answer, and then once the answer is complete, you'll also get some follow-up questions, which you can click on and further interact with it to get subsequent answers. I'm going to be setting this up within a JavaScript or Node.js environment, so you'll be able to have something that you can deploy to an endpoint. You'll be able to see how powerful the new Grok LPUs are at generating this inference speed. I built something similar to this a number of months ago, but one of the bottlenecks that I ran into previous to using Grok was the inference speed. So my best guess on how something like Perplexity is set up is you have an inference for generating a search query for a search engine API for the sources here. Then you have the answer itself, which gets streamed out from the LLM. And then finally, you have the related follow-up questions here. So I'm going to show you how you can set this up where you'll be able to return the sources, you'll be able to get that answer, and then you'll also be able to have those follow-up questions. So effectively, those three main components within Perplexity. Now, the thing with this, I really tried to focus on the speed of it. So I'll just show you once again how this works. So I'm going to say, tell me about Anthropics Cloud 3. So essentially what we're doing to set this up is with the first message, we're sending that to the Grok endpoint and we're asking to rephrase it. Once we have that, we're going to get all of the different sources and you'll be able to specify within the endpoint how many sources you want. In this case, I set it to three. And then once we have those sources, what we're going to do is we're going to scrape all of the text contents from there. Once we've broken them up, we're going to embed them. We're going to query them. And then we're going to be passing those top results with all of that information from those web pages to Grok to respond back to us within a stream here. Once we have the full response back, we're going to again query Grok, and then we're going to get these follow-up questions like we see here. I'm going to put a repo within the description of the video where you can pull this down and play around with it, or if you want to follow along and see the different steps on how they set this up. The first thing that you're going to have to do is just bun init a new project. So I'm going to be using bun. You could also use npm, so you can just bun init dash y within your terminal. And then from there, you're going to have to install a handful of things. You can bun install Cheerio, Express, Langchain, and OpenAI. Once you've done that, you can go ahead and make a .env within the root of your directory. And then from there, we're going to be using three different API keys. So we're going to get one from OpenAI. What we're going to be using from OpenAI is their embeddings model. So you're going to have to track down three different. We're going to get one from OpenAI. We're going to get one from Grok. And then we're going to be using the Brave Search API. Right now, at time of recording, Brave gives you 2,000 free queries per month that you can go ahead and play around with their API. And with Grok right now, it is within their alpha or beta, and it is free to use. In terms of the cost for embeddings, it is very cheap from OpenAI. So just make sure to head on over to OpenAI, Grok, and then Brave. And then once you have all those plugged in, we're just going to get started within our index files. I'm going to have everything within here, and I'm going to run through it step by step. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to import a handful of different modules. Like I mentioned, we're going to be leveraging Langchain for a variety of different things. We're going to be requiring the OpenAI package and then Cheerio to do a little bit of simple parsing for our web page. Once we have that set up, we're going to initialize an express server. You can set this to whatever port that you like. I just have mine set to 3005. We're going to set up some simple express middleware. Once we have that set up, we're going to initialize Grok and our embeddings. Now, the thing with Grok is it does conform to the OpenAI schema. So you can go ahead and still leverage the OpenAI package. They also have an SDK that you can use if you'd like. But if you want to use OpenAI, you can just pass in the base URL as well as your API key for Grok. So what we're going to do, we're just going to set up a post request. You can put this to any endpoint that you like. I'm just going to set it to the base URL in this example. Then I'm going to console log an awful lot of things. So if you saw within the example, it runs through pretty quick and the successive order on how the different things are accomplished. First, we're just going to log out that we've received a post request. Once we've done that, we're going to go ahead and destructure a bunch of different things. The different data that you can send in to the API, it's going to be the message, the sources, and then it's going to be optional whether you want to return those sources. It's going to also be optional whether you want to return a follow-up question. And then the embedded sources in LLM response. So if you want to have annotated responses, similar to Perplexity, where it will show you within the LLM response the different queries, that's going to be what the embedded sources in LLM response is. Then we're going to have some simple variables that you can play around with for our reg pipeline. We're going to have the text chunk size for the number of characters that we embed. We're going to have the text chunk overlap for the overlap within those embeddings. We're going to have the number of similarity results, which we query from our vector store. And we're going to have the number of pages to scan. So I have a bunch of defaults within here. We don't need to necessarily explicitly pass in all of these at once. Just know that these are the default settings if you're playing around with us. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to declare a function that rephrases our input. My rationale for doing this is that not always the input that you send in is going to be one that's going to be well received for a search engine API. In this case, we're just going to go ahead and specify that we're going to be using the mixed row model. 
We're going to be using the Mixro model for all of these just different examples. And then within the system message, we're going to say you are a rephraser and you always respond with a rephrase version of the input that is given to a search engine API. Always be succinct and use the same words as the input. Only return the rephrased version of the input. I found that this does work pretty well. If you want, you can play around with this a little bit, but I did find this works reasonably well for accomplishing what we want to do. And then within our user message, we're, we're going to go ahead and pass in the input string that was sent in from our request. And then we're just going to log out that we've rephrased the input and got an answer from Grok. So once we've done that, we're going to initialize the search engine process. So we're going to go ahead and set up Brave. We're going to pass in our message. We're going to ask for the rephrased message that we had just set up. Once we have that, we're going to go ahead and get the documents from Brave. Essentially, all we need is the link and the title. And then we're going to normalize the data. And then I also see a little mistake here of hard coding the count of four, which I'll update within the repo. What we're doing for our normalization is we're just going to make sure that we have a title and link and that the link doesn't include brave.com. I did find for some queries, it did often return brave.com. So just to filter those out, we're just going to return the title and link for each of these. From there, we're going to go ahead and just do a simple request for each page. Now, the thing to note with all of these different requests is I have it set up with a simple fetch request. Now, for a lot of pages that load on the client side, this isn't going to be enough. So you might have to use something like Puppeteer, which would inherently slow down all of this if you want to be able to access a wider array of websites. Just one thing to note on that. And then to extract the main content, we're going to parse a number of different things. So we're going to remove the nav, the footer, script tags, all of the different things that we don't really want. All we really want to load up is the text content. So we don't want to load up things that are within an iframe or a script tag, etc. You can play around with this a little bit more and layer in some things to filter out some other data if you like. And then this is going to be where we set up the vector process. What we're going to do is we're going to ignore any page that has less than 250 characters. And the reason for this is say if there's an error message on the page or it doesn't like that you're trying to make a fetch request or something, we're just going to return those and skip over that. Then what we're going to do is we're going to set up our recursive character text splitter from Langchain. What we're going to do is we're going to be passing in the chunk size and the chunk overlap that we had specified within the request. Then from there, we're going to go ahead and put all of those different split up texts within our memory vector database. And then within the metadata, we're going to put the link and the title. Then we're just going to iterate through all of these to set this all up. Finally, once that is done, we're going to perform a similarity search with the message that we had sent in. And then we're going to pass in the argument of the number of results that we specified. So here is going to be where we get our sources and then also the sources parsed if we specified that we want to return those within our API. And then we're going to filter out the duplicates within the link. So it's only going to be showing one link per source. From there, we're just going to say that the reg process is complete and we're going to be preparing the response content. So for the main streaming portion to set up the response for the answer from the LLM, we're going to say, here's my query. We're going to pass in the message and then we're going to say respond back with an answer that is as long as possible. If you can't find any relevant results, respond with no relevant results found. Then if we've specified that we do want to embed sources in the LLM response to get that annotation, we're going to conditionally return the sources used in the response with iterable numbered markdown style comments. Then we're going to JSON stringify all of the sources. And the reason that we do this is we're going to pass in both the top results from our vector retrieval process, but then also that metadata as well. And the reason that we do that is within the metadata, we have the link and the title, and that's going to be what it hopefully uses to generate all of those different annotations if we've specified that we want them. And then finally, we're going to specify that we're going to have streaming is set to true. Then for the API itself, I have it set up just to respond back once everything's complete. So we're going to be concatenating our response as it gets streamed in here. So the way that the API is set up is it's going to respond once we have that response in full. You could also tweak this a little bit if you want to just stream out that response to your API. So what we're going to do is as we go through all of the different chunks that we receive back, we're going to make sure that there is actually a message there and that the finish reason does not equal stop. So as it's going through there, we're going to write it out to the terminal and then we're going to be adding with each chunk to this response total. So once we have that set up, we're going to set up our response object with all of the different conditionals. We're going to say, if you said that you want sources returned, we're going to go ahead, return sources within the object. For the answer itself, we're always going to be returning this. And then for the follow-up questions, if you passed in return follow-up questions to true, we're going to go ahead and generate those follow-up questions. And then we're just going to be logging out the follow-up questions once we've generated that and send our response. And then lastly, to generate the follow-up questions, what we're going to do 
is we're going to create another query within our system message. We're going to say you are a question generator, generate three follow-up questions based on the provided text, return the questions in an array format. And then within the content, we're just going to say generate three follow-up questions based on the following text, return the questions in the following form. And then we're just going to be sending those back within an array. And then finally, we're going to be setting up our server. So that's pretty much it to set all of this up. And then from there, you can just go ahead and query this with whatever you'd like. So again, I'll just query this one more time just so that you see how it works. We see that it's running through all of those different steps relatively quickly. We get that streaming response back. We get our follow-up questions. And then we have everything within the responses here. So we have the sources, we have the answers, and then we have the follow-up questions here. So that's it for this video. If you found this video useful, please comment, share, and subscribe. Consider becoming a paid subscriber on YouTube or Patreon to help support the channel. Cheers until the next one.